From the heart of Wayne County, this is Wayne Goldsboro Television, Goldsboro, North Carolina. Today is Friday, it's November 15th, the middle of the month already, can you believe that? This is Wayne Goldsboro Television on this Friday morning. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Happy Friday. Happy Ho Ho Friday to you too there. Oh boy. Glad to have you with us and on today's show we have Cricket Davis here from Goldsboro Family Y. Great! And she's here, Wayne, talking about uh, a new program here in the community. It's called Darkness to Light yeah. and she'll give us more details about that and she's also talking about a program called Wise Men, mm. and it's about giving back to your community. Right. She, you'll hear more about that. And you know, those are two great programs right there, and they have so much to offer at the Oh Goldsboro my goodness, Family they certainly Wild. do. That they do. Then All we have right. Tyler Graham Barwick here, for she, who is the president of Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce. There you go. And she's here talking about their special program to start the holidays off. They have an entire weekend of events. So stay tuned to hear about that, and everyone's invited. All right. Today, November 15th, and it was on this very day. The year was 1904. The Wright brothers were scheduled to fly about a month. Well, they had been practicing a lot, but uh, it was about a month away from their flight. 19... That was 1903. Anyway, it was about a year after they had flown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, year. Anyway, you get the idea. Just trying to kind of get it, you know, in that, in that frame there. Mm -hmm. But one of Broadway's most famous lines, one of the most famous phrases was uttered for the very first time. The year was, was 1904. That? On this very day when Ethel Barrymore said, appearing in the play Sunday, spoke the famous line, That's all there is. There isn't any more. That's all there is. There isn't any more. She said it. She said it right there. It's a famous line. Remember that. If you didn't remember that, you weren't listening. Okay. Or you weren't born. Well, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's that. <laughs> Birthdays for today. Yes. I'm glad you asked. Sean Murray is turning 36 today. Sean Murray plays McGee on television's NCIS. NCIS. He played McGee and he had a facelift some years ago and I liked him better before than he, anyway, doesn't look like McGee anymore. Anyway, he's 36 today. Sam Watterson of Law and Order fame. He plays mm -hmm. Jack McCoy, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, district attorney, uh, the ADA rather. He's having a birthday. He's 73 today. Kevin Eubanks of The Tonight Show. He's uh -huh. a band leader there. He's 56. Judge Wapner. Hello, Judge Wapner. He is he is 94 years wow, today. Wow. Happy birthday, yeah, Judge Wapner. Yeah. Guilty of being 94 today. Anyway, also a birthday for Sidney Tamia Poitier. Poitier. Poitier is having a birthday. <laughs> she turns 40. That's Sidney's little baby girl. She's 40. Uh, birthday also for Yafet Koto. Yafet Koto, a very talented actor, very big guy. But extremely talented. He's 74. Best Supporting Actor, Primetime Emmy Award for his role in Raid on and Tebby. Uh, and Judith Chapman is 62 today. She played Gloria on The Young, young and, and the, the Restless. Restless. There you go. Happy birthday happy, happy. if it is your special day. That's exactly right. Okay. Well, Wayne, let's talk a little bit about a, a process that is going to be happening for the next few weeks here in Goldsboro. And we want to make everyone aware of what's going to be happening. Okay. What, what's going on? The city of Goldsboro has contracted a company called Hydra Structures. Mm -hmm. They're going to be doing something called smoke testing sewer lines. So this is to check sewer lines across the city to see where there are cracks and crevices so they can be repaired. Now, how will that affect you? Yes, good question. Yes, how that will affect you is beginning November the 18th. That's Monday. Yes, the week of November the 18th is when you will start to see possibly some smoke-like product seeping from different areas in the community. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. Okay. 
This non-toxic smoke will be introduced into manholes and forced down into sewer lines with the use of a air blower. Mm -hmm. Smoke will escape from the system at any point where there is an open break in the line. Mm -hmm. For example, smoke may rise from the ground, out of manholes, vents in building roofs, clean outs from underneath buildings if poor plumbing exists. Be advised the smoke can enter your home or office or business if there is a crack or crevice in your sewer line. The smoke-like product is non-toxic, non-staining, it does have a slight odor, it's white to gray in color, and creates no fire hazard. You do not have to be on site during any type of testing. Mm -hmm. It is advisable to pour a gallon of water into every sink, tub, or floor drain that is not used on a daily basis. Oh. That is not used on a daily basis. Okay. So the, the sinks and the tubs and the toilets and all those things mm -hmm. that you use every day, mm -hmm. they are fine. They're fine. You don't have to do They're a okay. thing with them. Okay. But if you have sinks, tubs, floor drains, that type of thing that you mm -hmm. don't use on a daily basis, pour a gallon of water and let it sit. Okay. To pl plug it up. To plug it up, it, yeah, yes. Plug this it up. will okay. fill the, the what they call P-traps and prevent right. smoke from entering your building. Right. Now, those that you use on a daily basis, you can leave alone. Nothing nothing will happen to those and water okay. will not enter. But this is basically so our crews can get out and do this to check for any type of sewer lines that have cracks and so they can be fixed across and repaired across our community. Okay. okay, we'll tell you more about that. We'll give you some examples. We're going to create a short little video that we'll be running on, th on this show, on this TV station, and we'll have on the city's website goldsboronc.gov to let you know more about that. Okay. And I'll be interviewing the, the uh, individuals from Hydro Structures, okay. which is the company that okay. we have contracted. Make, make sure I understand this now. Mm -hmm. uh, beginning this Monday and all yes. next week, smoke possibly rising in the home. It's not dangerous. It's not toxic. Don't worry about it. Right. Uh, and it'll be grayish in color. It's That's not exactly fire right. hazard or anything like that. All then right. they're going to take the week of Thanksgiving off. Will not be happening that week. And then the mm -hmm. following week, the week of December 2nd, it will start again. Okay. So it's two full weeks. Okay. We'll be talking more about that. We certainly will. All right. All right. I believe it's time to go to our interview, so stay with us. Have you heard what's happening at Goldsboro Family Y? Well, joining me today is Cricket Davis from the Goldsboro Family Y, who's here to tell us what's happening and how you can get involved. Hi, Cricket. Welcome back to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. We love having you all on, and I believe you have a program, Darkness to Light, to talk about today. We do, and, and I keep just trying to talk about it and talk about it because it's been such a fantastic program. There's a program called Darkness to Light Stewards of Children, and it's a child sexual abuse prevention program. Mm -hmm. And um, we had the opportunity a couple weeks ago to do a community meeting, and um, we had a lot of folks from the community there, the, the chief of police, the mayor, the city manager, um, some of the sheriff's department, some of the school systems, and um, we showed a, a video called Childhood Stories, and it's, it's a 22-minute video with just survivors talking about what an impact that child sexual abuse had on their lives. Um, first time ever I've done a presentation when at the end of the presentation people were completely quiet because it's so devastating, and, and it's one of those things that's so easy for people to gloss over and say, right. you know, child sexual abuse is a problem, you know, but when you think about the statistics are one in every four girls will be sexually abused by the time they're 18 and one in every six boys. Oh my goodness. You know, that's just, that's enough to tear it's your heart out. That's enough my to tear goodness. your heart out. And, and, and it happens in every community. Mm -hmm. Happens in every community. It happens to everybody. Um, that's what I like about the Childhood Stories video because it has somebody from, you know, the former Miss America to just a regular, you know, somebody like me that, that's talking about it, and they talk about how it's affected their lives, their entire lives. Um, and fortunately, a lot of people are able to kind of go on and, and push through it, but it adds so much to our crime rate. Right. Teen pregnancy, drug abuse and substance abuse, suicide rates. And those are the things that a lot of times people will go, God, I don't understand why we have such bad problem with mm -hmm. drugs. Well. You know, and that, and that's not the only reason why, right. but that's a leading problem why. Um, and the more that we do to educate the community. And on how to prevent. How to prevent mm -hmm. and how to minimize and actually to talk about it. Because that's one of those things that, and you and I have talked about this before, mm -hmm. that's not something that you're saying when we're having a conversation about going, oh God, did you hear about this child right. sexual abuse program? Because 
it's not a comfortable topic, right? But we've got to start being comfortable talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our children are our future. Oh, absolutely. And you know, and we want to protect. Yeah, future. and we talk about all the time. You know, we we put helmets on our kids when they ride bikes. You know, we do all these things to protect their safety and. We expect a lot of times by talking to our kids about child sexual abuse and stranger danger and all mm -hmm. these sort of things that they're going to be protected. It's not their job. It's, it's our, our job. job. You can't ask a five-year-old to protect themselves. True. And so, um, you so know, what does this program do? This what does program, this program do to educate us? This program us? will talk, you know, tell you about it, tell you exactly what child sexual abuse is. It's not only the act of child sexual abuse; it also has to do with pornography human trafficking. Oh, wow. I mean, it just, it stretches in so many variables. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unbelievable. And people go, I mean, how does that go from that to that? I mean, it just, it evolves into this huge thing. Um, it talks to us about minimizing opportunity. 80% um, of the children that are abused, it occurs in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Oh, wow. And that's something that we can all do something about. Right. You know, it's like at the YMCA, we don't allow staff and children to be alone one-on-one, -on -one, ever. And, you know, that's just good practice. Just a preventative measure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like somebody goes, well, how can I put that into use at home? Well, when you have a babysitter, and it may be the babysitter and your child, you know, always check in with your kids when you get back. How was everything tonight? And, and let the babysitter know that there may be sometimes that you just kind of pop by to see right. what's going on. Right. Because um, you want that transparency there. Mm -hmm. And you want your kids to know that you're following up and checking on them. Right. Um, so it, it talks about that a lot. It also talks about what to do if a child discloses to you. And that's one of the most important things is that being able to say the right thing. The first thing is to tell them that you believe them. Um, the second thing is, is to tell them how brave and courageous they are for sharing that with you and that you're going to help them. Um, you don't want to promise them that you're not going to tell anybody else because in order for us to get right. them some help, you know, we're going to have to do that. So, um, you know, that's the thing that's important to remember. And as a, as a parent, I'm sure some people, when their child discloses that, it's like, there's this panic set in, right. like, oh my God, what do I say? Mm -hmm. You know, what do I say? What do I do? So, you know, this helps, tells you, and guides you on what to do. And then it also talks about um, reporting procedures and and how okay. to go about reporting because it's not just up to law enforcement to report that. I mean, we're we're all state of North Carolina. If, if somebody tells you, discloses you, they've been sexually abused, you are supposed to tell somebody, call Department of Social Services, mm -hmm. and then let them do their job. Right. You know, from there. But until we start attacking the problem from the beginning. Right. And, and this is what, you know, I keep saying every time I go out, this to me is putting predators on notice. Oh, absolutely. Like, we know what you're doing. And, you know, we're, we know kind of what the profiles are. We know that you want to get children in one-on-one -on -one situations. We know um, that you want to be in youth serving organizations. We know all this stuff and we're watching. Um, background checks are just not good enough. Right. You know, you want to continuously be doing child sexual abuse prevention. You always want to be checking up on them to see what's going on. Um, because it's so underreported, you have people that are, I hate to use the word lurking about, but I'm going to, that are lurking about that are predators that you would have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, one of the startling statistics were, is that 90% of the children know they're abusers. Yeah, that's so scary. Because, I mean, you know, growing up we were always taught, again, you know, stranger danger, right, and, exactly. but it's less than 10% don't know they're abusers. 40% of the children are abused by somebody that the family trusts and they put themselves in position to right. trust for that reason. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, it's all about educating and all about, and, and then we want to talk to our kids. Selena Smith that works with Wayne County Public Schools mm -hmm. has a wonderful book she called certainly does. Joey Wants to Know. So, you know, because parents are going, well, how do I talk to my kids? And That's the book a is a tool. wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. If you've never seen this book, the Wayne County Public Library has it, mm -hmm. and you can purchase the book as well. But that is a great way to have a conversation with your child through a storybook or mm -hmm. through, through telling the story. And it, it's very much for young children. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so who are you gearing or who do you think needs to take this particular class or needs to be a part of this? Is it all of us? Is it certain? Is it parents? No, it's every adult. Every it's adult. every adult because it's our it's our responsibility. Um, and the tipping point, they say, in, in order for the numbers to decrease, is five percent. So five percent of your community of your community, five percent of Goldsboro, is going to be fifty one hundred people. Need to be trained. Yep. Right now, I've trained a little over 500, so I only have 4,500 left to go. There you go. <laughs> um, and we'll be having trainings. But you're making your mark. Yeah, making my mark. Having trainings. Darren Grosky and I are both training. But we're also going to have some facilitator trainings for people that are interested in becoming okay. trainers. Because the more, the more, more trainers have, the you better. have, yeah, the more people yeah, hear so. the word. 
Well, where, where can people find out more information about this? They can go to our website, um, www.goldsboroymca.org. GoldsboroYMCA.org. And okay. then Darkness to Light has a great website, and it's DTL.org, Darkness to Light.org. Okay. And they have, I mean, you can go on there and get all kinds of information for your kids, for your community. Resource information. Yeah, it's okay. just, it's a fantastic. Darkness to Light is the name of the program. Mm -hmm. People can come to the Y, they can visit your website to find out more about how you can be trained, how you can learn about it, how you can have a conversation with Cricket or Darren mm -hmm. to find out more about it. And would would you be open and willing to going to church groups or going to I will go PTAs, anywhere. any group, mm -hmm. and have a, a session? Mm -hmm. How do your sessions work? The training sessions are a two hour long session. Okay. Um, and it's the, the charge for it is $10 and that's only for the book. Now. I'm in the process of working on trying to get some funding for that and in, in mm -hmm. hopes to do that because I don't want that to be a barrier. And today I was fortunate enough to go speak with the principals um, for Wayne County and, and I told them, don't, I don't want the price to be a barrier. I will find somebody in some way for us to get the books or right. whatever we need to do to train. Um, so don't let that be a barrier. Um, Are to, you trying to, to train teachers training, as well? Trying to train everybody. I, I did 200 teacher social workers and school bus drivers at Tommy's Road oh, Elementary perfect. in August. So, Wonderful. you know, it's just a, a matter of doing that. And then if people want to call, um, you know, they can call the Y. And, and a lot of times out of these trainings that I do, we have a lot of survivors that step forward. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. And it's, you know, it's important to know that somebody's there for them and they can call. Um, you all are opening the door as a support system. Mm -hmm. You really yeah. are. You're touching a lot of lives already. It, yeah. And there's a lot of resources out there I can point you in that direction. And, you know, it's just so important for people to know that there's somebody there. And, and, you know, on a personal note, I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse. And so, you know, I've got some resources that I've used right. and, and, you know, I'll be glad to talk and with you anybody can walk about them it. Because it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those things like once you finally say it and get it out. Right. You know, not that I like to say it and get it out, but, right. but, but it makes say, you even stronger. Yeah, it makes it, me stronger. And, and you know, Cricket, what you're doing is affecting so many people. You yourself, just by admitting it, saying it out loud, mm -hmm. and being proactive and doing something to help prevent other people from going through mm -hmm. it, you're touching a lot of lives in Wayne County. I hope so. You are. No doubt about it. If we can save one, that's why I tell everybody, that's if I can right. save one, that's, you know, it's worth telling it. Mm. It's worth telling it. Well, so. if you want to find out more about it, you can go to, tell me the website one more time. You can go to the goldsboroymca.org website or DTL, which is short for darkness to light, DTL.org. And you can Wonderful. Google, you know, Google yeah, darkness, darkness to, light to light and it'll come up with all sorts of stuff. Great, great, great. Well, tell us about your Wise Men program. Our Wise Men program. Um, our Wise Men program has been going on for 13 years now, and we do it in conjunction with a joining fee special that people bring in a $40 gift card, and we waive their joining fee. And so we collect the oh, gift cards. Oh, nice. Um, and then we also go out and ask other people in the community, because people say, you know, I want to do something for a family at Christmas, but I want to make sure that it's, you know. A family that needs it. A family it. that needs it. And mm -hmm. so what, what we did um, 13 years ago, I developed, you know, a kind of like a coalition of folks that we work with and we work with the Boys and Girls Club, we mm -hmm. work with Mary Ann, we work with the with Wayne Uplift Domestic Violence Program, we work with the school social workers, um, then we you know work with some of the churches and the base and then two years ago we added 3HC because you know Christmas is just not uh, all about the kids. Exactly. So exactly. you know we, we've because of HIPAA laws they can't tell us who we're helping but mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't. Um, so what we do is once we get all the gift cards and the money and stuff collected then I know how many people we can assist mm -hmm. and so I tell these groups you know send me this amount of families. So then on um, this year it's going to be on Sunday night December 15th we have a wise men celebration and we bring the families to the Y and we have volunteers to take the parent or the guardian shopping when we provide them with the gift cards oh to do that. Oh my goodness, how wonderful. And then we keep the kids at the Y and do activities with them. You know, some of the important things that go along with our mission is we read them the real Christmas story. A mm -hmm. lot of folks don't know, you You're know, and that's exactly what the right. C and YMCA stands for. Um, and so we do that and then they play all kinds of games. Um, <clears throat> the Junior Women League is, is gonna come help this year. The um, Lord's Table always comes and helps us. We always have volunteers from the base. Um, the bridge is going to come help us out this year, Bethel Church, and, and anybody else that wants to come and help. And, and a lot of community members, yeah, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, I getting mean, and involved. that's that's the, you know that's what it's about. And those last year we had about 75 kids from six weeks to like 15 years old. So, you know, when you're trying to split them all in a, up in a group, we don't have too many volunteers. And um, it's a wonderful experience. Um, I have people call me every year when they're setting their calendars up, going, "When's the Wiseman celebration?" Because I want to come help. Mm. So they can go to our website. So yeah. if you want to do something good this oh, Christmas yeah. season yeah. and know you are helping a family, whether it's donating mm -hmm. or whether it's coming and being a part of this particular event, mm -hmm. Wise Men, 
at the YMCA Sunday, December 15th. Mm -hmm. Prime yep. opportunity. Do yep. you already have a time set? Yep, it's at 5.30 and um, we'll, like I said, we'll show up and then let you go take your photo because I tell everybody it's like you know if you've done all your Christmas shopping and feel like you want to go out and do some more <laughs> this is a good opportunity to go do that and plus it helps um, some folks just don't because they don't have the means to go shopping right it's helpful to have somebody go with them and help mm -hmm. them find really good deals and help them find right. spend the money things. wisely that's right that's right so it's just we just got all kinds of good stuff going yes, on at the family do. life. Yes, you do. And this is a perfect time of year to showcase what you all do throughout the year mm -hmm. and all the wonderful and fantastic programs. You touch a lot of lives through the Goldsboro Family Life. We do. Right here in our community. Mm -hmm. Their website, one more time, Goldsboro. GoldsboroYMCA.org. There you go. You can find out everything you want to know there. The topics we've talked about today, darkness to light, preventative of sexual abuse program, and the Wise Men program, all on their website. Thank you, Cricket, so much. Thanks As so always, much. all right. Thank we you. wish you the best through the holidays. Thank you, you too. And that's what's happening at Goldsboro Family Y. Your source for what's happening in your community is Wayne Goldsboro Television. Joining me today is Tyler Barwick Graham, the president of Mount Olive Area Chamber of Commerce. She's here to tell us about all the happenings that's happening in Mount Olive. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Tyler. Thank you for having us, Kim. We appreciate it. Oh, we'd love to include you all. Of course, well, you're a you. huge part of our community. And thank you. We love to make sure everybody is aware of what all's happening in Mount Olive. Well, what we're going to talk about today are all of the Christmas festivities that we are going to kick off on starting at the beginning of December. Okay. So we have a Christmas kickoff weekend planned for everybody. Oh, wow. In our, in our county, in our community, we want to see you guys out there. Um, we are going to start the weekend on December 6th, this is a Friday evening, mm -hmm. from 6 to 8 p.m. in downtown Mount Olive. We're going to have the tower lighting ceremony at Town Hall at 615, and that's just going to kind of start off the night. Santa Claus will come into town. Um, we've got the Mount Olive College Chamber Choir. They're going to be performing. Uh, Miss Robbins Academy of Dance and Gymnastics, they'll have some groups performing there. And from um, the stage at downtown Mount Olive, you can hop on board our hayride. You can take a stroll through the streets of Mount Olive. And you can get a glimpse of all of the businesses in downtown that are going to be decorated. Oh, nice. And at the end of the hayride, you can cast your vote for your favorite decorated businesses, which I'm sure there's going to be some steep competition. Oh, I'm sure. And um, <laughs> you can visit with Santa. You can write a letter to him and leave a letter in his mailbox. And Santa Claus always writes back. Santa Claus so, always writes back. All right, kids, good you listen to know. up. You need to go leave Santa a letter. And if you don't leave it that night, you can leave it any of the weeks leading up to that event or afterwards. So you'll be leaving a mailbox out somewhere? Right. There is a mailbox okay. in front of the chamber. It will be put up probably the week of Thanksgiving. And All right. kids can take their letters to Santa and he will write back. All right. Um, we also have the local retailers and a few vendors um, that are going to have you know, great deals and it's the perfect time to start your Christmas oh, shopping. Yes. If you haven't already, I haven't. I haven't either. <laughs> um, so we need to get, get hopping. I know, I right. know, that night. There we go. I'll be working, but we'll, we can swing it that's a few shows. Right, that's right. Um, we also have free food and refreshments that are so generously given by the local retailers and organizations. There's a student art show by Carver Elementary students. Oh, um, that's always fun. It is fun. And then the kids that are there that night can enter for their chance to be the 2013 Junior Grand Marshal in the Christmas Parade. And that's the following oh, day. Oh, that is nice, so Tyler. if their name is drawn, then they will get to ride with Santa Claus in the parade. And so that's a oh, big deal. Oh, my goodness. That's How special would that be? Oh, um, that's a reason to go with it. There you go. There you go. Now, is that any age category? I'm um, up until I think ten years of age is what okay. the entries say. Uh, another attraction for the evening is the David J. Aaron Museum, and I don't know if you've had a chance to check it out, but if you haven't, that night is the perfect time to do it. Um, it's located behind Southern Bank mm -hmm. on Main Street in downtown Mount Olive, and the Mount Olive Historical Society they deck the halls uh -huh. with um, <laughs> all of the historical decorations it's all handmade um, wow. from nature it's beautiful they really do a fantastic job decorating um, in the traditional garb right. mm -hmm. and then they also have children's activities they have crafts Christmas stories and prizes and um, this which is all really, the same night all the same night wow. from 6 to 8 p.m. so whenever you're on the hayride you know you're checking out the dancers you're checking out the singers and the businesses don't forget to go by the museum because they have a lot planned for that evening um, also, 
in an effort to give back to our community that night, we are requesting that folks that come downtown bring a canned food item or a bag of canned food items for us to um, give back to the community. And then also we will be pre-selling luminaries at the chamber office mm -hmm. um, for $2, which is nothing. You can right. go down and, and buy enough to honor all of your loved ones or in honor or in memory of and um, we and hope that is this for like throughout the community? It is throughout the community. We encourage everybody um, to take part in this and that night we will line the streets with the luminaries that have the names on the on the bags and oh, okay so they're purchasing but they're, you're, you're going to be putting them right, on showcasing they, them downtown. Right Bonsport. they'll be nice. the glow that night oh, in downtown okay. Mount so it'll be a really nice event oh, for sure. and the proceeds from that are going back to the empty stocking fund of Wayne County so it's for a really good Absolutely. cause and it's it's nearly nothing, you know, and right. just a way to give back. Um, and the event overall, I don't know if I said this or not, but it's free for everybody. So even more reason to come out. It's a that really night. great night to it kick is. off the holiday season. It and is, and get so you many, in the holiday yeah, mood. Yeah, you've got so many things happening, young and old. Everybody has something exactly, that night they can exactly. enjoy. Exactly, and it's just a short. I mean, it's from six to eight, and it flies by. So don't miss out on the fun. And tell us that date one more time. December 6th, this Friday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. December 6th, yeah. all right. The next morning, we have another early morning on the Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce. We'll be hosting a pancake breakfast prior to the Mount Olive Chamber Christmas Parade. Oh, so you so, can get you some pancakes. Get you some before pancakes you're while you're the waiting. Christmas parade. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and we're encouraging um, everybody that's participating in the parade to come on out that morning. They can buy their tickets ahead of time at the Chamber office or through, you know, one of our Board of Directors members. Um, the, we Where will it be taking support. place? It's at Highway 55, Burger Shakes and Fries on Saturday, December 7th. It's from 7 to 10 a.m. and it's $5 per ticket. On, and to-go plates are available. So if you have a float out there that morning and you want to buy 25 buy plates, plates and take them out to your crowd, <laughs> please do it. Good idea. <laughs> please do it. Um, but all the proceeds from this event will go to future Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce events um, in the community which is just like the Christmas parade and make these right. events happen. Right. Um, so we would appreciate your support. Okay, that, that's perfect timing. You get, <laughs> get all kinds of goodies and fill exactly. your stomach and be exactly. ready to Exactly. Go ride ahead and park Christmas in the parking lot yeah. and sit out there, wait for the parade and eat you a plate of pancakes. That's part of the lineup there anyway, you go. isn't it, Tyler? There you go. <laughs> um, also, the Christmas parade. If anybody is interested in participating in the Christmas parade, we are still accepting applications. Um, it, it will start at 10 o'clock that morning, but the lineup is at 9 o'clock a.m. And what's your deadline for our, signing up? Our deadline is November 25th um, before a late fee is in place, and it's a $30 late fee, so please, please, please Ooh. get all of your entries in before November 25th, and we have so many come in afterwards, and we hate to do the late fee, but just so we can have the lineup in the paper and have everything right. in order, um, it's it's beneficial for everybody to register before November 20th. And we have um, the applications available if are they all is online? interested. They are. Okay, so, wonderful. Okay. That sounds great. Um, then to close out our Christmas weekend, we have a Christmas by Candlelight service. This event is hosted by Mount Olive College and it will be at the Mount Olive Assembly Hall on Wooten Street, right mm -hmm. beside Mount Olive Middle School. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Christ-centered service feature featuring six scripture lessons tracing the salvation history and um, each lesson is followed by music from the Mount Olive College Music Department and other local groups within the community and so it's a really special event. There actually um, is a need this year to do two programs, one at 2.30 and one at 6.30 so if you can't make the afternoon come All on right. out that night. How can you find out more about that? You can find out more information on, on Mount Olive College website www.moc.edu. Christmas by candlelight. Right, and this event is also free. So we've got a whole weekend of I free mean. events, except for a $5 contribution or, you know, for a pancake plate or a $2 luminary bag. But this is another great free event, but you do have to have a ticket. So if you want to go to this event, um, you can reserve your ticket by contacting Melba Ingram at 919-299-4582. Or like I said, you can just visit their website and find out MOC. more information. Right. And we have all of this information at the chamber and would love to help you on just make your plans for the first weekend in December. Well, it sounds like you have got a full weekend. We do. We you do. You can stay busy all weekend long if you so choose. There we go. You might have to take off from the on Tuesday, maybe. Might need to. <laughs> Reschedule the weekend. But we're very excited about it. We've got a lot of things planned. 
And really, if you've never been to the um, downtown Christmas Lighting, it's really just a special night. And we think with the luminaries and, oh, yes. and all of the different events that are going on, it's just a really good time to celebrate with your community and to to kick off the Christmas season the right way. It certainly is, you know, and people talk about all the time, looking for things to do in the community. Well, Here there's no are. better time right. than the holiday season than to start family traditions of your own right. and doing it within your own community. You, you couldn't ask for a, a better set of events and you guys have an entire weekend yes, of we opportunities. So do. if you want to find out more about it, you can visit the Chamber of Commerce's website, which is? Um, www.mountolivechamber.com and that's M-O-U-N-T. You spell it out, Mount <laughs> Olive Chamber. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with Thank us you today. For us and this them. is what's happening at Mount Olive Chamber of Commerce. All right. That's going to wrap it up for today, I guess. It certainly right, is. So join us again Monday. We'll be right here. And until then, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. And this is what's happening in your community.